I'm Pat Gunn, and this is the first class in my course on introductory programming. The people who should take this class are people who have uh, a good comfort with, uh, with computers, but who haven't done any programming before, maybe on the level where you can work with a spreadsheet and actually input formula. Over the course, I hope to get you to the level where you'll be able to understand and write moderately complex software and uh, also understand what programming is, what it's like, what it's like to be uh, to have a, a, a programming project, um, how code is structured, things like that. So first, what is programming? Programming is the embedding of human intelligence in a form where it can be executed by a computer. Maybe that's a bit airy. Programming is the translation of human ideas for how something should be done into a program, a set of instructions that a computer can use to actually perform the task. So to make this a bit more concrete, we're going to start with a metaphor. We'll be using metaphors a lot in this class. They're essential to approaching a topic like programming where we don't have a lot of natural experience with them. And the metaphor that we're going to use here is a jigsaw puzzle. If you were given uh, a jigsaw puzzle, if I were to uh, take one out and dump it on a table in front of you, how would you solve it? So being able to answer this program, or I'm sorry, being able to answer this question in great detail will help you understand what it means to program. So we Many of us have, have actually solved jigsaw puzzles in our lives. It's kind of a fun thing to do on a rainy afternoon, maybe with a friend or loved one. And the, uh, the process of piecing together that puzzle, it's rather satisfying. You, you see the progress that you make. You, you watch the picture slowly coming, uh, coming into view as you keep on adding new pieces uh, into the already completed bits. But how, would, uh, how do you do it? And the level of detail that we're looking for here is actually how would you organize the pieces before you start to assemble them? How do you identify candidate pieces to pick up and try against each other? And um, if you can actually provide instructions on a, on a great level of detail, then you have something very similar to a program. So. How am I going to teach the class? First, you're going to need a computer. I assume that you already have one because you're watching this, although you might be watching it on a phone or some other mobile device. You're actually going to need to have a computer. If it runs Linux or BSD, that's great. It'll be easy for you. If it's running Windows, no problem. And I'll be walking you through in a future video on how to set up the environment. Uh, that you're going to use to uh, to learn. And the reason that we need to set this up is that you need to have the two programming languages that we're going to, uh, to use in the class installed. And you're going to want to work through the exercises that I provide um, and actually have those experiences uh, in order to get uh, get used to, uh, to programming. And um, with uh, with Linux or uh, or one of the other Unices that are available, you probably already have the languages. I believe OS X comes with the languages built in. Um, with Windows, you're going to need to install them. It's not a big deal. It, it won't be hard. And uh, and as I said, I'll I'll walk you through it. And you're also going to want to have a good uh, good editor, uh, a good text editor to enter in the programs. You have a lot of choices. I'll be covering that as well in the video on setting up your environment. Um, and so uh, this will be a long sequence of videos uh, through which I'll be um, I'll be teaching you concepts. And each of the concepts that you learn and the syntax that you learn in both of the languages that I'll be teaching in will expand the possibilities that you'll have when writing software. And we'll be starting with really small, uh, small software, um, and working our way up t uh, to the bigger stuff. So, 
you won't be writing anything like Microsoft Word uh, or a web browser or anything like that at the start. But uh, we'll get we'll get at least up to the level where you'll be writing moderately complex software. So, what uh, what is a what's a sample program? Programs do vary in size. Some uh, there are some very small software uh, that we'll start out writing that will just basically do. Uh, one thing or just a small set of things. It might just print out the words uh, hello world, which is a, a classic introductory piece of software. It might just add some numbers and give you some results. And software ranges from that all the way up to, as I mentioned, web browsers, word processors, um, video editors, things of that sort. Um, we're not going to get all the way up to writing the really big stuff, but I'm hoping that by the end of the class you'll have a reasonable idea of what it takes to write the big stuff. And so there are also pieces of software that accept add-ons. Um, when you structure a piece of software in a certain way, uh, people can change how it works by writing other pieces of software that hook into it. So a web browser plugin would be an example for that. So yeah, software can come in various forms. It's not always just a, I'm going to decide what I want to do. I'm going to write it from, uh, write from scratch my piece of software. And it will do everything. And that's the end of it. Now, people, people write software all the time that takes many different forms. Your software might live out there on the web somewhere. It might be a plugin to Photoshop that lets you uh, do a, a manipulation that you can't do using the built-in Photoshop tools, or that might be really slow to do using the built-in Photoshop tools. It might be something that will load a big chunk of data into a database so that you can work with it, or maybe load something into a spreadsheet, or prepare it to be loaded into a spreadsheet. Software takes many different forms. Uh, but a general uh, facility with, with programming will serve you well. Programming languages are, are the ways they... Uh, a programming language is a... It's a lot like a human language in that it conveys the meaning that you, uh, that you want the program to have. And just like spoken languages, there are many different programming uh, languages out there. It's possible, generally, to say that you want a certain thing done in many different languages, and they'll be written a little bit differently in, uh, in different languages. Just like if you were going to write the phrase, uh, I would like to purchase a sandwich in Spanish or Italian, they would have a certain similarity to them, but they wouldn't be phrased exactly the same way. So we'll be learning two programming languages over, uh, over this course, uh, Perl and Python. And these are two scripting languages. They're reasonably similar in a lot of ways. They're a little bit different. And the reason that I'm teaching both of them is that I'm not intending to just teach you the specifics of one programming language. Um, I want you to be comfortable with picking up new languages. And you should know that Generally, programming languages, they do have a lot of similarity to each other. It's not usually hard to pick up a new one uh, once you've learned your first one, particularly if the languages are close to each other. There are languages that are more different from each other than these two are, um, like Lisp or Java or Haskell. Um, but Perl and Python are relatively, uh, are, are reasonably similar. They're both reasonable languages to start with and that they're they don't make you deal with a lot of difficult paperwork in order to write a program. And uh, they're both useful languages. You can do good stuff in either of them. Um, so how does a programmer approach a problem? Like, let's say I want to write, uh, write a piece of software that'll sort a bunch of numbers. So typically, you make a high-level plan. Like, what does it mean to sort numbers? How am I going to get the numbers? How am I actually going to manipulate them in certain data structures and prepare them for output? 
Uh, now, some of the words that I just used are words that you might not be fully familiar with. We will get to them. Don't be frightened off. Um, but you make a high-level plan. Then you break it down. You focus on small portions of the problem. You implement them. And then uh, once you've solved pieces of the problem, uh, you want to work through until you've solved most of the pieces of the problem. And then you want to hook your pieces of code together and then debug and test them. See, do these really solve the problem? What if something goes wrong in this piece of code? Will my uh, program fall apart? Will it do something stupid or will it let me know? And we're also going to learn how to structure code in that typically it's not just a long list of instructions that do the whole program. Uh, typically you'll divide your, uh, your code into pieces that you can reuse. Um, and so to, to go back to the puzzle metaphor, let's say that, uh, that before you actually wanted to start trying to put pieces together, you're going to sort all of your pieces, uh, um, maybe find all the pieces that have edges or all the pieces that have a certain color, and put them into separate piles. So that would have a coding equivalent. It, there, it, there are many times when you're writing a piece of software where you have to deal with data. You're going to process it a certain way to get it ready for some of the later work that you're going to do with it. So if we were writing a piece of code that would solve a jigsaw puzzle, you might decide when you're thinking about that big plan that you're writing, what do I need to do first? Uh, let's divide the, the big problem of how do I solve a jigsaw puzzle into preparing the pieces testing the pieces, building the structures, and then maybe uh, maybe a different set of co uh, piece of code for how to solve a mostly completed puzzle, which we probably do different things when we're trying to solve a mostly completed jigsaw puzzle than when we're in the middle of it or when we're just getting started out. Um, but, uh, but yeah, you're, you're going to structure your code just like you structure your approach to the problem you're going to write things called functions. You're going to use things called libraries. We will cover those in later classes. And sometimes when you're solving a harder problem, you're not going to be able to start right away. You're going to need to do some planning. You're going to need to think a lot about your approaches to the problems. You might build flowcharts. You might even need to prove things to yourself mathematically before you decide that an approach is good. You might use a calculator. You often use pen and paper. You might even document the design of your program rather fully before you get started in implementing it. Generally, you'll, the, more, the bigger the problem that you're trying to solve, the more planning you're going to want to do beforehand. If you're just going to be solving a, a few bits of maths or you're going to be saying hello world, you probably don't need to plan that uh, very much. If you're just adding up a series of numbers, you might be able to keep the whole design of your uh, of your program in your head because it's trivial. But not all problems are trivial, and you are going to need to learn and develop habits uh, to approach bigger problems. And we'll be covering those at least briefly over this course. And many of the uh, organizational habits that you use to approach um, to approach big problems are also the, the habits that you're going to use when you're collaborating with other programmers. And that if you're taking a big problem and dividing it up into many smaller problems and figuring out how those bits fit together, if you're careful enough with how you do that, one programmer might solve, uh, might take on some of the subtasks, another programmer might take on another set of the subtasks. And so you could have five or six or ten or a hundred programmers um, working on separate portions of the same pro uh, program. Uh, this takes organization. Sometimes even the person who's designing the program won't be doing any of the programming. Uh, but this is typically for much bigger projects than you're going to be working on initially. And generally the good practices for working together Many of them are also good practices for working alone, documenting your code, 
really coming up with a clear design. These are things that you absolutely have to do if you're working with, with other programmers, but they will help you if you're working alone. Particularly if you have to set aside a program um, for a while and then come back to it. You're not going to remember all of the details that you put into your head when you were first designing and first coding it. And the more documentation that you wrote, uh, the better off you're going to be later. And it's generally the same kind of documentation that you would write for somebody else that you would write for yourself. Um, and programmers typically will will document what they're trying to do all throughout a program. These are called comments. And some people comment a lot more than other people do, but generally if you have a big chunk of code and you're not uh, commenting it at all, you're probably doing something wrong. So, yeah, a uh, a a program, it is not something you write once. It, it Usually it's not something you write once, you're done with, and you put it away forever. Or it's perfect, and, um, and you're going to be able to find it useful forever. Typically you write it once, and it's not perfect. It might have some problems, it might not always do the right thing, but it might be good enough. And you'll come back to it, you'll decide this wasn't quite right, or, or sometimes even, I'd like to solve a problem that's related to this. My code almost does the right thing. Um, I'm going to copy bits of it into my new program that I'm writing to do something different. Or I'm going to modify this old program to also do this new thing or to do this new thing instead. Uh, a, pro uh, a completed program is a lot like something that you, bu you build out of Play-Doh in that you can sculpt it long after it's done. You can improve it, you can change it, uh, you can make it prettier. Um, there's a lot that you, uh, that you can and usually will do with code, uh, even after it's functional. And of course debugging is a big part of, of programming. Typically your first go at solving a problem, you might get, uh, get it where it's 90% right, but sometimes it does the wrong thing. and You might then later spend some time trying to correct it to make it do the right thing all the time or do the right thing more often. This is uh, These all take skills that you're going to learn. So <clears throat> how this class is going to work, uh, I'm going to progress through uh, important language features and data structures that you're going to need to learn how to program. Uh, we'll be working through a lot of examples, and the examples will use the new things that I'll be teaching you. And everything will make you able to do new things that you couldn't do before. Every uh, most of the data structures, most of the concepts. Um, the first programs that you write, it'll largely be your typing in or cut and pasting things that I've provided to you and maybe altering them a little bit. Later on, you'll be starting programs more or less from scratch. Um, you'll be doing a lot more of your own original work as you're coding your own ideas, um, turning your, your uh, working on your own projects. And I, I strongly encourage you to come up with projects that you think you can do with what you know how to do already and try to do them. You might not be able to produce the best uh, solutions right off the bat, but, but actually taking uh, the things that I'll be teaching you and making use of them and finding out what you can do, what you're having problems with, uh, working with the concepts that you learn will help you learn them better. And uh, so this will just be a, a series of, uh, of classes on YouTube in this course. I will be teaching other courses on YouTube. And of course, if you happen to be um, where I'm living, which at the time of this recording is New York City, but you never know in the future. Um, uh, uh, I do uh, occasionally offer in-person classes. But yeah, you'll, you'll progress through these classes. You'll keep on learning concepts. You'll want to play with these concepts on your own. Write your own software. Work through the exercises that I'll be giving you. Looking at the code I'll be showing you. And by the end of the course, hopefully you'll be uh, you'll be writing your own software and maybe eventually teaching your own courses. 
Now, you can interact with me by leaving comments on the YouTube video or by sending me email. My time isn't unlimited, but I'll make an effort uh, to, help, uh, uh, to help a reasonable number of people with their questions. And I might, uh, tr uh, I might make future versions of these videos that will do a better job at, at, at teaching you the things that you ask me about so that you won't have to ask questions. I have taught people in person several times before, but generally I've been able to tune my teaching uh, to my audience. They'll ask me questions and, uh, and I'll be able to handle uh, their question right away. And I might teach it differently the next time. On YouTube, I can't do that. So uh, I'll just have to keep on working on Im improving the videos. So I do have an assignment for you. Before you uh, get to the next uh, video, I'd like uh, you to actually think about that, um, about that solving a puzzle, uh, uh, about that solving a, a, a solving a puzzle metaphor. So if if I were to take a, um, if I were to take a jigsaw puzzle in a box and just dump it on a table, and so you have a, a pile of jigsaw uh, jigsaw pieces in a pile. And I ask you to solve it, but uh, but instead of actually touching the pieces, I'm asking you to tell me how you would solve it. How would you do it? And go into as much detail as you can. How how you would prepare to solve it? Um, what you would do with the pile of pieces before you start uh, before you start really matching them against each other? How would you decide what to try to fit together? What features you would look for in the pieces? what kinds of things you would find yourself doing over and over again. And just come up with a, with a plan as detailed as possible for uh, solving the pieces. I'm sorry, for, for solving the puzzle. And uh, if, so I, I'm not necessarily asking you to email th uh, this to me, although if you want to, uh, feel free. But think about how uh, how you would solve this. At least write it down or type it into uh, a word processor, something like that, and keep on working on improving that plan. And I'll see you in the next video where we'll actually start to get into Perl and Python. Um, although I'll probably have a separate video first where I'll work through um, how you can set up a programming environment. So. Uh, that's all for this video. Remember that uh, also that this is just a second draft of this video. Um, I do intend to keep on improving it. Uh, certainly the video quality isn't as good as I would like it to be because of the, um, the devices that I'm working with. But, um, but this, this is a second draft. Comments are welcome. If you are a programmer and have some feedback on uh, on how well I'm teaching or ideas for improvement. I'll certainly be interested in listening to that. All of the course materials for this, though, are going to be open. And any suggestions that you have are things which I might roll into future, uh, future course materials. So if you do make any claims uh, to, to own ideas, don't bother sending it to me uh, because I, um, I, I am going to assume uh, and, unless you tell me otherwise, in which case I'm not particularly interested in hearing it, that uh, anything you send me can be included in, in the coursework. Um, but, uh, but yeah, stay tuned, and if you are here to learn to program, I, uh, I hope that this will, uh, will be a useful course for you. Uh, take care.